Okay, so I'm going to start from the beginning. Uh, my name is Darren Golden. I'm the founder and CEO of Golden Solar. We are a solar energy uh, contracting uh, company. We are also licensed uh, electricians and licensed roofers. So we specialize in uh, all, uh, we, we can do all of these things, but we specialize in uh, installation of solar panels and battery backup on uh, residences and commercial buildings. So it's a really exciting industry to be in. We're very proud to be able to save people a lot of money on their power bills once they get solar panels installed on their homes. And for folks that get solar and get uh, battery backup, we're able to get them resilient so that if a hurricane knocks off the power grid, uh, battery backup will continue to power the home uh, and the solar will continue to recharge the batteries and they're basically good to go. So solar saves people money on their power bill. Batteries uh, with solar can replace a generator so people have backup power. So uh, we're going to do weekly sessions here because uh, coronavirus has everybody basically stuck at home, hopefully, and uh, thought this might be a good opportunity to you know, share some knowledge with the general public if uh, folks are interested in solar. So, so that's for the intro. Uh, these weekly sessions are going to cover different topics, and I'm going to try to pick things that are interesting uh, for people. So if anybody has any special requests for a weekly topic, uh, you, know, you can feel free to, to reach out to us and suggest a subject matter, and, and we'd love to address that. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, something that's probably you know, one of the most important things when you're doing, going solar, and that is which components uh, to choose. So there's many companies out there. Every company basically usually has their favorite panel, their favorite inverter that they like to go with, their favorite racking that they like to go with. And so part of uh, the decision uh, for, for, for a homeowner when deciding what company to go with is which components they want in their uh, solar system. So I want to take a step back and make a distinction between two types of solar systems. There's a grid-tied solar system and there's a grid-tied battery backed up system. So a grid-tied system doesn't include batteries. Grid-tied solar systems consist of solar panel, an inverter, and racking. So solar panels produce electricity, or DC power, out of sunlight. Uh, an inverter is a device that changes DC power to AC power. In other words, the power that panels produce to the power that's usable by your home. And racking is essentially an aluminum structural system that is the skeleton of the system, if you will. That's the part that holds it all together. That's a grid-tied system. So there's a net meter and customers buy and sell energy with the grid. Uh, a grid-tied battery backed up system adds an optional device, which is a battery. And, and so what that does is it makes the home uh, resilient in the event of a hurricane. So today we want to focus on the two most important uh, components uh, for uh, the decision on a, on a grid-tied system, and that is the, uh, the panels and the inverter. And so I'm pulling up the spec sheet here. And really what I want to do uh, by, by pulling this up is, is just showing how easy it is to look up spec sheets. So I want to go over, let's start with solar panels, and then later we can get into inverters. I want to go over what are the things that, that we look for when we look at uh, solar panels. And so by educating our customers on how to read and interpret spec sheets, we're going to educate our customers on how to compare one brand of panels to another. So you have to understand all of the important criteria. And, and by the way, criteria really change depending on where you're located. So for example, we're in South Florida. We have hurricanes. We need strong solar panels. We need solar panels that can withstand, you know, 175 miles per hour wind speeds if, if you're in Miami. That might not be important at all if you're in California. So you know, it's it's important to understand that this isn't one size fits all, but we were looking for the panel that will do the best job for what we need it to do, and where it's going to get installed is a big part of that. So uh, here's a Hanwha Q cell spec sheet. So anybody that that was with us just a moment ago saw how quickly I typed it in. So if you're looking at a certain brand of solar panel, 
and you want to look at a spec sheet, what would you do? Let's say we're talking about Mission Solar. Go into Google and type in Mission Solar Spec Sheet. And here it is. Look for the one that's a PDF. And then you can you can just simply pull it up. It's, it's literally that quick. Uh, these spec sheets have really normalized. So they're all going to look just about the same, right? So we're going to compare Hanwha Q-Cell to a Mission Solar. And, and what I'm doing here is I'm pulling it up side by side. So, so that people can see, right? So all the spec sheets are usually going to be two pages. And so the first page is going to have a picture of the solar panel. So visually, we know what it looks like. In this case, both of these panels are all black, which is kind of an aesthetics thing. That's generally what the uh, general public likes. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's an attractive product. It's streamlined. It looks less industrial than old-fashioned solar panels I had on aluminum frame and a blue cell and a white back sheet so that you can see the line in the grid. The all black panel is much, much cleaner uh, looking for, for those folks that have, uh, uh, you know, the panels visible. So, so the first page, you're going to see a picture of the panel. So that's first of all. Now, uh, let's talk about some of the other things that we can see on a spec sheet. So I'm going to open up one full screen. So we have it a little bigger here. And so uh, here we have the efficiency, so 19.5% efficient. So let's talk about what that efficiency means. This efficiency is how much power is retained from sunlight as, as uh, a power source to direct current as a power source. So basically we're comparing watts of sunlight uh, hitting a surface to how the panel can convert those watts to direct current. That is not uh, necessarily the same amount of power that we're going to have uh, actually getting sent to the house because there's an additional small, small loss when we go from DC to AC. But basically that 19.5 might seem like a low number, but, uh, but it's, it's comparatively uh, uh, really high. So these days panel efficiencies – Normal panels. I'm not talking about stuff that NASA's using, but but you know regular consumer grade panels are are you know maybe uh, uh, up to like 20 percent, 21, 22 percent efficient. So uh, there's other there's other types of panels. There's there's three classes of panels in terms of the the type of cell: monocrystalline, crystalline, and thin film. Uh, the most efficient ones are monocrystalline. That means that every cell is a single crystal. Uh, those are going to be the most efficient. So those are going to be the ones that are in the 20% efficiency range. Uh, basically, polycrystalline is something that people saw a lot of about five years ago. We don't really see those today. So if you're getting solar, only get monocrystalline. They're by far the most uh, efficient. So innovative all-weather technology, you know, okay, it produces power in low-light conditions. We definitely uh, want to uh, be able to make the distinction between, you know, fluff and, and, and real technical language. Um, so, so really what we're always looking for is the numbers. So 19.5 is the efficiency. That's, that's great. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on here. We live in Florida, and we have hurricanes. And so when a panel manufacturer – reaches out to us and says, hey, uh, would you like to consider buying our panel and using our panel uh, it, it, you know, in your market? My first question to them is, what is your panel uplift rating? How is its structural performance? Again, this is something that's probably particularly critical to South Florida. Again, we have hurricanes. So, so Golden Solar is a company that's born out of Miami-Dade County which, you know, I dare say has the strictest building codes in the country in, in terms of wind speeds. So, you know, you can, you can feel free to, to go on Google and just search Florida wind map. Uh, and, and this is, this is what we get. This is, so this is the building code. These are, these are the things that we have to, uh, you know, meet in our installations. And what we see here is bands of wind speeds in terms of miles per hour, and so I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. Uh, th this right here is like Miami-Dade. So we really are in that 180, 185 range, right, between the 180 and the 190. That is 
very, very, very high, right? So that's not a normal day. That's basically a Cat 5 hurricane. But what we're saying is we want to pick panels that can survive a Cat 5 hurricane, right? So how do we do that? Panels shouldn't really represent how many uh, miles per hour they're good for because that, that, that really is a function of the configuration of how it's installed. But, but, and, and so that's something that comes down to the engineering of the, of the site-specific design. But what uh, a panel can represent is its pressure rating, which is in pascals. Pascals is basically a uh, force divided by area. So I think a pascal is one newton meter, uh, or, or I'm sorry, one newton per meter squared. Um, you know, what folks in the States, in the U.S. are more uh, accustomed to is pounds per square foot. But, but basically pascals is the same as pounds per square foot. There's just a conversion here. Um, these panels... And, and, and so every panel has two types of uh, pressure ratings. There's a snow rating and a wind rating, which is another way of saying downward pressure or upward pressure, respectively. Obviously, we don't care about the snow rating in South Florida because we, we simply don't have snow. So, so what does this mean? Snow is something that's going to sit on a panel and it's going to be weight pushing down on a panel. That's why snow is also known as the uh, positive pressure. It's pushing down. And it's also known as the uh, downward force. Uh, wind is upward pressure. So we're talking about winds wanting to suck the glass right out of a panel frame. And that's also known as upward pressure or negative pressure. And so this, this number right here is really the most critical thing to us when we look at panels. It's what is the wind load rating require. Most panels per the IE, per the industry standard, will be rated for 2,400 pascals. And that might be fine in most of the country, but in South Florida and probably most of Florida, we really don't recommend going uh, for a panel that has any less than a 20, than, than a 4,000 pascal rating. So this right here, in my opinion, is easily one of the most important things to look for in a panel. So if you see a panel that a solar company wants to sell, the first thing you want to do is look up what's the wind rating on it, and if it's anything less than 4,000, move on. If you live in Florida, that's probably not the panel that you want to be uh, using. Another thing that I want to point out is the size of the panels. There's basically two sizes of panels, and they're referred to in terms of the number of cells. There's 60 cell panels, and there's 72 cell panels. Now, a cell is usually a standard uh, size. A cell, one single individual cell, um, is usually six inches by six inches. So a 60 cell panel is going to be six inches wide. I'm sorry, six cells wide by 10 cells tall. And so six by 10 is 60. A 72 cell panel is going to be six cells wide by 12 cells tall. So it's going to extend a little bit lower. So just to, just to find an example there, uh, let's say uh, Q cell 72 cell panel spec sheet. The reason that I want to pull this up is I want to show people why uh, more watts per panel is not necessarily the best. So this is an example of a 72 cell panel. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. What is the wind uplift rating of the same brand? It's a Q cell panel, 70 cell panel, 2400 pascals. The 72 cell panel is 2400 pascals, and the uh, the, the, the 60 cell panel is uh, 4,000 pascal. And, and if you think about it, that makes sense. The smaller the glass, the less wobblier it is because, uh, you know, that's just, that's just how structure uh, works with, with materials. So panels, of course, are also rated for the number of watts per panel. So this particular class of panel this brand, this Q Cell Peak Duo Black G6 330 to 345 uh, comes in rated anywhere between 330, 335, 340, and 345. Why can one product with one, uh, you know, model have four or uh, yeah, four different ratings? 
it's simple. Whether it's a 330, 335, 340, or 345, it's the exact same panel coming off exactly the same assembly line. It's, they're, not, they're not four different assembly lines for four different power classes. But what it is, is there's microscopic variances because of how nuanced this product is. And as a panel comes off of the assembly line, it gets put into a calibrated testing chamber. It's connected to leads, and it's flashed with standard test conditions, STC conditions. These are standard test conditions. It's 1,000 watts per meter squared and 25 degrees Celsius and 1.5 atmospheres of pressure, if anybody wants to get really technical. Uh, but, but basically, the panel's flashed at, at these standard test conditions, and then it's, it's measured what the power uh, you know, is reporting when it's flashed. And it can report anywhere between 330 to, uh, to 345, and that's how it gets its, its label, its nameplate rating, and that's how the same panels coming off the same assembly lines can be rated for four different sizes. I like to explain this in the context of explaining panel sizes because we like to, uh, you know, promote Q cell panels and, and we like to use, we only use 60 cell panels in Florida. And, and again, the reason is 4,000 Pascal rating versus uh, 2,400 Pascal rating. Again, bigger glass, wobblier glass. So one of the things you want to look out for is you definitely want the panel that's rated for the most watts. But you have to make sure that when he tells you the watt panel, the 60 cent panel. So efficiency in solar is defined for density. The amount of watt that it can convert to DC power divided by the area of the panel. Right? It's watts per square foot. That is, that is the efficiency in terms of the, the conversion. Well, a panel is not more efficient if it has more watts and it's larger. It's just packing in more cells. So when we say that we're using 60 cell panels that are 340 and someone else comes in and says, well, my panels are 350, so they're better. Our first question is, which panel is it? And if it's a 72 cell panel, more watts doesn't mean more efficient. It's just bigger, so it fit in more cells. So that's one of the things that you want to be really, uh, you know, cognizant of. And and again, I highly recommend looking at the spec sheet of the panel. You want to make sure that it's rated in the wind direction, because nobody cares about snow in, in Miami, uh, for 4,000 pascals or more. Okay, so I pulled up another uh, panel here that that you know, let's let's check out that uh, panel. And so let's see, we got the Florida wind map, the Florida wind map, we got QSO, we got Hanwha. Um, oh yeah, here we go. We got the Mission Solar. Mission Solar is actually a little bit stronger. Mission Solar is rated for 5631 Pascals, and they say front and back. So again, it's different terminology, but it means the same thing. Front and back, wind and snow, upward and downward, positive and negative pressure. Uh, this is a very strong... Um, panel. This is a structurally very, very strong panel. And they actually did the conversion from Pascals to PSF. So 5631 Pascals is 117 pounds per square foot. So that means that somebody that weighs 117 pounds could stand on a single square foot of the panel and it would be fine. So, so that's actually uh, the, the design pressure of the panel. Okay, there's, there's design pressure, there's test pressure. This is the design pressure. So that means we can actually install them based on these uh, conditions. But there's a trade-off, right? So, so here we have a structurally stronger panel, but it's 300 to 310 watts. So again, these are, these are the kinds of considerations. Do we want a stronger panel? Do we want a more efficient panel? Uh, again, these are both excellent products, but, but one is better in one particular criteria than, than, uh, than the other. So I think the other one was like 19 percent efficient. This one is, is 18.65. So these are the things we really want to look at. We want to look at the panel strength. We want to look at the wattage. We want to look at the efficiency. Um, and then we want to look at the warranty. And then we want to look at the degradation. So, so let's take a step back. Every solar panel is going to experience something called degradation. Degradation means that over time, the panel will naturally degrade, right? So when the panel is rated for 340 watts, that's its 100 percent of its rated, its nominal power. And so what they what they say is 
uh, the panels are warranted for, for 25 years. And so for the first, so, so they start out warranting 98% of what they're actually rated for. And so thereafter, it's going to drop 0.5% per year. So that's the degradation. That means that with time, the panel will um, convert less of the light that hits it into electricity. Uh, you know, you know, everything ages basically, but uh, this is a pretty slow degradation. So the panel is going to lose 0.5% every year uh, for, for, you know, the, the, uh, for, for the 25 years. And so it's going to be, so here's two data points on it. It's going to be at 93.1% of where it started at year 10. So, so here's year 10. This is the degradation chart. Year 10, it's at 93.1% of where it started, and it's going to be at 85% of where it started on year 25. So the whole duration of the warranty at year 25, it's 85% where it started. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're full disclosure. It's not going to be exactly how it was 25 years from where it started, but this is actually very good. This is a very slow degradation. Uh, let's compare it side by side with the other panel. So they're saying that at year 25, it's going to be at 85% of where it started. Again, this is Q-cell. So let's, let's compare that to Mission, the other panel that I happen to have uh, pulled up here. This is their degradation chart. So again, there's standard things that you're going to see on every single spec sheet. And so if you can learn how to read a spec sheet, you can really understand how to compare uh, panels, apples to uh, apples or panels to panels. Um, again, they're also saying that they're going to degrade. Uh, if you recall, the, the uh, degradation profile on Q-cell was 0.5% per year. Their degradation is going to put the panel at 90.7% at year 10 and 80.2% at year 25. So this is a little bit of a worse degradation than Q-cell. Q-cell is going to be at 85% at year 25. This one's 80.2. So again, these are things to consider, right? Another trade-off, right? This is a structurally stronger panel, but it has lower watts and it has a more aggressive uh, degradation. Which one should you go for? Really depends on the conditions that you're going to be installing uh, the, the, the panel in. So I, I want to point out another thing here. This says 25 years, but over here it says that the warranty is 12 years. So every panel manufacturer has two parts to the warranty. There's the product warranty and there's the uh, degradation uh, period, or what's also known as the power production guarantee or the power production warranty. The, the product warranty says, like any other product warranty, how many years does it guarantee to just not spontaneously fail? So in this case, it's 12 years for the product warranty, which is pretty standard in the industry. And it's 25 years for the degradation, which, again, is pretty standard to the, warrant, to, to, to the industry. Uh, you know, some panels uh, actually have 25 years on both of them. So if you can get one of those panels, that's ideal. Um, this is Q-Cell, and the way that it's advertised here is 12 years product warranty and 25 years performance warranty. But I believe that there's an even newer spec sheet, which, which I wasn't able to pull up, uh, which actually shows 25 years and 25 years. So you can get the 25-year uh, warranty on both the product side and on the performance side. So... Um, we're, we're about to kind of wrap up the uh, talk on, on panels. So, so just to recap a couple of key factors here, we have uh, the pressure rating. And again, if you don't live in Florida, you probably don't care about this. But if you do live in Florida, I'm assuming that you want your solar system to not get shattered after, you know, a cat three or four or five hurricane. So you want to look at the wind load. And again, I highly recommend... 4,000 pascals or greater, no less than that. So again, the minimum and, and what many, many panels are in, in, that, in that particular uh, characteristic is 2,400 pascals. This will not uh, work in a Cat 5 hurricane. So we're talking about the panel's ability to resist wind sucking the glass right out of the frame. So if you don't want to walk up to your roof after a hurricane and find a bunch of shattered panels, uh, I recommend finding a panel that's rated 4,000 pascals. So this is really critical. 
Um, so, so we're also looking at the degradation. So this is the efficiency that we have and how it actually holds up over time. Uh, again, this is one of the best products. This is one of the slowest degrading products because what you can see here is at year 25, it held 85% of its nominal value. By the way, this is worst case scenario. It's going to be this or less degradation. So they're warranting that it'll be no uh, worse than this. And, and, then, and then I highly recommend going for a 60 cell module. So because uh, if it's a bigger panel, it's probably going to have a lower pressure rating. So, so that's how we look at panel spec sheets. And again, we see that they're always going to have the same things. You're going to have your, your, your pressure rating. You're going to have your degradation profile. Um, you're going to have a couple of different uh, options uh, basic, based on how the panel flash tested off the assembly line. And, and again, this shows us the power rating. So this is, this is probably the most important characteristic of the panel. What's the power rating? What's it rated for? This is the efficiency. These are the uh, you know, physical dimensions. And so that's how we look at uh, uh, panels. So I want to talk a little bit about inverters. Uh, the inverter is the device that changes direct current to alternating current. We recommend Solar Edge as, as the inverter. So I just want to take a step back. There are three generations to inverter technology. There's a string inverter. There's a micro inverter. And there's a DC optimized inverter. And I kind of presented it right now in the order that they uh, were, were essentially um, invented. And so the string inverter is the original inverter. That is the inverter that it connects solar panels like um, that, that, that connects solar panels like uh, Christmas lights, essentially, right? So we, we've got panels connecting positive to negative, positive to negative, and that inverter type is not very good because what happens is if one panel is shaded, the entire string uh, is is shot. It's it's only as strong as the weakest link. I think I verified the cars. We're going to log in. And so what I want to show you guys today is is power monitoring. So in addition to the fact that solar uh, inverters change direct current that the panels produce alternating current that the home uses, the inverter is also the brains of the system. So this is very important. When we install solar systems, and solar systems are, are you know, they're, they're, they're costly, we want to make sure that they're always working. You know, we present a system that's capable of producing electricity. We have our estimations on how much electricity it will produce. We want to make sure that it's actually doing that. Right? We model out an investment, we model out a return on the investment, and we expect over time to uh, be able to make that, that money back. And so that's true. I like to say that solar is an amazing investment, but there's a catch. There's a caveat, and that catch is that it's always working, and in addition to it always working, every single individual component has to always work. That's where Solar Edge comes in. So this is the third generation of inverter. This is the newer and best uh, brand out there. It's the most efficient. It's the most reliable. And um, this is this is what, what, what we present. And so what this does is it adds an additional device to the system. So traditional inverter just has one inverter for a whole system. Microinverters, which was the second generation that came out in the 90s, put one small inverter on every single solar panel. Uh, but the problem with that, it was really kind of overkill in technology. I like to use the analogy that it's like having an engine on every wheel. You don't need it. There's just way too much uh, to go wrong. And through Solar Edge, they did the best of both worlds. So you still have a central inverter. You still have a panel level device. Uh, but that panel level device is DC in, DC out. It's known as a, pow a DC power optimizer. And uh, it achieves basically everything that, that the microinverter achieves more efficiently with uh, much more streamlined uh, equipment. So here's an example. I always show customers my own house. I practice what I preach. And, uh, you know, just to show you guys, like I said, this is also the brains of the system. So this is where we can go in and make sure that the system is live. It's working. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So we are, in fact, in real time connecting to the solar system and seeing exactly what it's doing.
So we've all heard the nickname Internet of Things. We take inanimate objects, we connect them to the Internet, we make them smarter. This would fall under that uh, criteria. So um, energy today, and, and this is literally today. Uh, here we are, last updated, 5A2020, that is today at 125. So this is current as of eight minutes ago. So the amount of energy that it produced today is 46 kilowatt hours. That's pretty good for a system this size. This is only 11.7 kilowatts, and, and we're only about midday. So this is the amount of energy it produced today. This is the amount of energy it produced this month. This is the amount of energy that the system produced over the lifetime of the system, 68 megawatt hours. And this is the lifetime revenue. So how do we calculate the revenue? We basically go on the admin side of the portal. When we get this set up, we plug in the local uh, value of energy based on the local power utility. And it's the very basic principle of a dollar saved is a dollar earned. Every kilowatt hour that this solar system produces is a kilowatt hour that we don't have to buy from the utility. And so that's the savings. Uh, so so solar, what Solar Edge does in, in you know, the admin side of this is it multiplies the amount of energy they produce by the value of the energy and it presents the revenue. And this, this, is, this is cool stuff. This is how our customers can see how well they're recouping their investment. So my system has saved uh, about $8,500. And how long has it been on? It's been on since the very, very end of 2016. So here we have the monitoring platform. This system was powered on at the very, very end of 2016, right? So it's color-coded. Purple is 2016, orange is 2017, red is 18, blue is 19, green is 2020. So it went on at the very, very end of 2016. Here we're on all of 2017. We see orange January to December. Same is true for 18, 19, and then 2020. Here we are in the first couple of days of May. And so this bar chart is going to grow on May as we get through May, and then you're going to start to see green in July and, and so on and so forth. So I can say that in, uh, you know, less than three and a half years of the system being on, uh, I've, I've recouped uh, about $8,500 in uh, energy savings, right? So, so that's really important for us to be able to see and demonstrate to our customers because, because solar is uh, obviously besides just doing the right thing by the environment, it's also a, a financial investment that we have to understand. This is the dashboard, right? So this is where we're seeing the system level information. So we're, so we're seeing up here the amount of energy that it's produced over different time segments. We're seeing how much money it saves. This is something that's really cool. On this system, we also have a consumption monitor set up. So not only am I able to track the amount of energy that the system is producing, I'm tracking the amount of energy that the home is consuming. And so, you know, we didn't really talk about net metering, so I'll touch on that briefly. When you go solar, you enter into a net metering agreement with the public, with, with, with the, you know, with the utility, right? So a net meter is a meter that can measure the flow of electricity, whether it's from the grid to the house or from the house to the grid. And the reason we get a net meter is because uh, there's a discrepancy in timing between when you produce electricity and when you consume electricity. For example, we produce the most electricity during those peak sun hours, let's say between 11 and 1 o'clock, but that also might be when the kids are out to school and the parents are out to work and nobody's home or using any electricity. Everybody might use the most energy in, in the wee uh, hours in the morning when everybody's getting ready to get out and everybody's going to, before the sun is really out, and, and everybody's going to be using a lot of electricity um, after the sun is set when everybody gets home. And so... Uh, there's a timing discrepancy, and that's where net metering uh, enters. So the idea here is that what happens is I'm going to show you guys a full day. This is this is monitoring uh, the graph of solar power uh, consumption and and basically that trade-off between buying and selling energy. So just to explain, this bell-shaped curve right here is all of the power that was produced by the solar system. So it makes sense. The solar system kicked on at about 6.30 in the morning, and the amount of power that the panels were producing got higher and higher and higher as the sun got more and more intense and directly overhead, peaked out at, at, at what's known as solar noon, 
So solar noon is when the sun is at its peak, may or may not coincide with actual noon. Like in this case, solar noon was actually at one o'clock and then the sun starts to set. So red is my consumption before I had any solar power to offset that consumption. That's in the morning. Red on this side is my consumption after the sun set. So what red translates to is import, meaning energy that I imported from the grid because I didn't have solar power at that particular time. Green is export. So that means power that I produced from my solar panels in excess of what I needed. It was, it was more power than I needed at that particular moment. And so what did I do with it? I sent it right all back to the grid. I didn't have to do anything. Everything's automatic. That's how net metering works. And so what is blue? Blue is known as self-consumption. So what's self-consumption? Self-consumption is power that my solar panels produced that I myself used exactly at that very moment. So the net meter or, or my public or you know my, my, my public utility will never see self-consumption because it's energy that the, 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 the solar panels produce that were that was used immediately on site. So again, red is what I take from the grid. Green is what I give the, green, the, the grid back. Blue is what I use myself for my own solar power at that moment. If green equals red, then I'm net zero. In other words, if what I send the grid equals what I take from the grid, then I'm net zero. If green is more than red, I'm net positive. I produced more than I needed. That, that's the case in, in, in this day, which is 5-6, right? So this is two days ago. Um, I exported 61.82 kilowatt hours. I imported uh, 43.12 kilowatt hours. So I have, uh, I don't know, about 18 uh, kilowatt hours that I produced more than I needed. I get to rack those up and, and put those in my reserve and, and use on another day where it might be the, the, the reverse, where I might have used more than I produced. But this is something really cool. This really shows us how much solar is being produced, how much I'm consuming, when I'm consuming it, and how my consumption and production are comparing in terms of what's happening with the grid. So this is looking at one day. This is looking at the months of production. And then finally, what I want to show you, oh, so, so, so back here, this is showing real time what's happening. So at this very moment, the system is producing 10.85 kilowatts. That's at this very second. Uh, the house is only consuming 1.48 kilowatts. And so what do I do with all that extra power goes right back to the grid. So if the house was using more than the solar was supplying, then this arrow would be flipped and be going from the grid to the house. So the last thing I want to show you guys on this is what I call the magic of solar edge, which is that not only can I monitor system level performance, I can actually also monitor panel level performance. And so let's go, let's go back to here. Just make a mental note. This is what the system looks like. It's this right side of the townhome. There's 41 panels right here. And so we map it out to look exactly like this. And I can actually see the amount of power that's being produced by every single panel individually. And so if there's, uh, and, and that's because we have a DC power optimizer, the other solar device or solar edge device on every single panel. So this is really cool. And, and this, by the way, this is how we keep the panel manufacturer, uh, you know, hold them to their word on the degradation profile. So if a panel underperforms, if it's degraded faster than it's supposed to, we're going to see that right here because we're going to see how each and every individual solar panel did relative to all the others. And so I can actually zoom in and I can see how many uh, kilowatt hours I have. I can look at the production of the array on different time segments. So if I put total, I'm going to see how much power each individual solar panel produced since the uh, time that this system was completely powered on. So each, each uh, blue square is a solar panel. The green square right here is an inverter. So this is, this is the grand total of all the panels. Um, I can look at them daily, weekly, monthly, yearly total. I like to show this. Not only am I going to see individual panel level data on power performance, I can see it on a timeline. I can see it in 15-minute increments. So I'm just going to hit the show playback 
And, and this is something really cool. So every one of these bell curves, you guessed it, is a day. So the sun comes up from darkness, starts at zero. It climbs and climbs and climbs until it gets to the peak at noon. And then the sun starts to set and it drops. So we see days that look, uh, you know, different. We see some different shapes here. The best looking shape right now is, is the fifth. It's a perfect shaped bell curve. So what does this mean? This means that there was not a cloud in the sky. This means that it was a perfect day. Excuse me. It was a perfect day. And I got the maximum amount of solar power uh, that I possibly could have. So what I'm seeing on the panels, they're all black. Why are they all black? Why are they all showing zero watts? Because the timeline is before the sun hit the panels. So as soon as it goes, we're going to get to, you know, 7 in the morning. They light up. They get brighter and brighter and brighter. They're going to get to their peak at solar noon, and then the sun's going to start to set, and they're going to get darker again. So they're color-coded. This has been designed to be really user-friendly. You don't have to be a statistician. You don't have to be a solar expert to look on your system and, and, and see if your system is uh, operating properly. You can just look at the colors. See if everything's blue and one's black, then you know that you have a problem with one panel. And so, again... You know, we, we like to use this because, number one, it's the most efficient. But, number two, this is the best way for us to protect our customers, protect their investment by making sure, number one, that the system's working. Number two, that every single individual component is working. So I'm going to pull it back. We're going to hit play, and we're going to see how the panels light up uh, and what they do, you know, over the week. I'm hitting play here, and what we've got is, uh, you know, panels reach noon it's may 2nd we're past noon the sun is starting to set and now it's nighttime and it is uh darkness again so now it's may 3rd panels start lighting up they get to noon and then it starts to set <laughs> this is particularly useful if you have let's say some trees that are maybe around the solar panels and right now it's okay, but maybe in a couple of years the tree grows and there's going to be a partial threat of shading on a panel. And you want to know when is the right time to cut that tree? When is the time that that tree actually affects how the panels are doing? This will tell that full story. So north is up, east, south, west. So let's say that you have a tree sitting right here. And right now it's fine, but in a couple of years it might start casting a shade here. So if the tree is here, the time of day that we have to worry about the tree shadowing in that direction is going to be in the afternoon, right? The sun is going to go from east and to the west. And so when the sun is right here, right here on the west side, for a tree that's right here, it's going to shadow in this direction. And so, you know, in that scenario, you would see that these panels are darker than the others. And you'll know time to trim back the tree. So again, we have full visibility of the system uh, uh, every single day, panel level. This is the maximum efficiency. We can see how everything is doing, and and this is this is really how we make sure that our customers have rapid return on their investments. It's really doing everything that it should. So so what happened here? What happened on May six that this bell curve is not as uh, smooth as May fifth? Well, the answer is clouds. You know, solar is an inconstant energy source. That means that the uh, amount, uh, or basically the weather is, is, is unpredictable and seasonal. Some days are beautiful. Some days are perfectly sunny the entire day. Uh, some days are going to be rainy the entire day. Um, in, in, in this case, that's what we see here. So, so uh, May 5th was a perfect day. May 4th was an excellent day. Today is looking really good. The seventh was looking good. We had, you know, a little bit of clouds on the second and the third. Um, May sixth was, you know, it was okay, but but we can definitely see that that there was some clouds, sort of, a little bit of clouds uh, all throughout the day. And so we get to we get to see everything that's happening here. Um, this is what a customer would see. So a customer would see their own account. They would see their own profile. They would be able to really track everything. Uh, Golden Solar we get to track uh, all of the systems that, that we've installed. So just to, just to give uh, everybody some sense of, of scale, 
Uh, this is, I'm pulling up the map view, so we're going to pull up a Florida map. I'm going to take out searching for my own system, and I'm going to pull up, uh, you know, everything. And so we have 1,046 systems installed throughout Florida, which, you know, speaks to our experience. We've, we've done this a lot. Uh, the grand total is 12.58 uh, megawatts. That's, that's what we've installed. And, and all of our systems have produced 20.12 gigawatt hours of energy. So that's how much energy has been produced by all of our systems in total. And, you know, this is a map. I'm zoomed out, so it's just showing everything smack on uh, Florida. But as I zoom in, and this is really cool, we get to see how the systems uh, distribute. So roughly, we have 172 in the north, 854 south. But I'm going to zoom in a little more. Now we see, uh, I like to get down to the you know tri-county area. So we've got a couple in the Keys. We've got you know a couple hundred in Miami, a couple hundred in Broward couple hundred in Palm Beach or, or, you know, a couple dozen in Palm Beach. And so as we, as we zoom in, we can see how our uh, systems are spread out. So once it gets to a colorful uh, pin, that means that it's a specific residence. Uh, basically we, we've got a lot of experience. We've, we've installed a lot of systems uh, throughout Florida. Um, I, so sometimes I drive around and, and I see a bunch of systems and I don't even realize that, that it was installed by us and then I'll go back on solar edge and I'll look and I'll say, Oh, cool. Yeah. That's one of our systems. Or sometimes I'll stand from a distance and I can make out the, the rail profile and I'll know that, that, that it's our racking and see a system that we got to install. So, so this is kind of fun. It's fun to, to be able to say that we've had a real impact on, uh, you know, close to 1100, uh, homes throughout Florida and, and help them, uh, switch to renewable energy. So uh, if anybody wants to ask uh, any questions, this would be a great time. Um, I, I would be happy to answer anything that, uh, that anybody's had to ask us on the subject of panels or inverters. We offer no cost, no commitment consultations. So if anybody wants to see if solar is a good fit for them, we would certainly love to sit down and uh, help you know, evaluate that scenario. Uh, we have pretty sophisticated software we can do simulations of rooftops. We start by understanding our customers' energy needs, and, and then we go from there to, uh, you know, size out a system based on the available roof area. We see if the customer can achieve what's known as net zero, meaning offset all of their own electricity or not. And, uh, you know, and then, and then we go uh, from, from there. So just wanted to show one last thing before I sign off. I just want to show everybody the, uh, the accuracy and the reliability of this monitoring platform. I'm going to, to log into my FPL uh, account and, and, and show what it looks like to monitor how my energy consumption is doing. Uh, versus monitoring my solar system performance and consumption monitoring. Here's my email. Feel free to send me some. Here's my password. Good luck hacking that. Uh, we're going to log in. And so uh, this is my this is my bill, right? Because uh, I'm just about net zero. So if you're completely net zero, the bill should be like nine dollars and change. And so uh, here we go to the energy dashboard. This is where you can see your consumption day by day, month by month. This is from FPL's perspective, right? This is from the perspective of the net meter. So somebody that doesn't have solar, all the bars on this bar chart are going to be green. That means that the uh, positive consumption, that means that they're buying energy from the grid. Gray bar is actually negative consumption. So, so any months that have gray bars are months that I produced more that I sorry, sent more power than what I took off. So, so let's, uh, you know, let's check out May. I'm going to click here on May. And uh, what I'd like to do is pull up the screens side by side. So back to Solar Edge, I'm going to go back to my account. And what I want to do is just look at what FPL calls delivered and received, which means energy that went from the grid to the house or energy that went from the house to the grid respectively. 
And I just want to kind of like look at that. So let's go back a day. Let's go back one more day. This day is going to be May 5th. Let's find May 5th with FPL. So here we are in April. I'm going to go next month. So here is the 5th. Perfect. You see here it says delivered 34.41 and received 59.58. So that's the grid, uh, the grid's perspective, the net meter's perspective. In other words, I gave it 59.58 kilowatt hours and I took from the grid 34.41 kilowatt hours. And we're going to compare that to what it's showing here. And so export is equivalent to the term uh, received from the grid. So FPL says 34.41, Solar Edge says 36.71. Okay, fair enough, those are pretty close. Um, and then received is uh, 59. Gotta make sure I got the right day here. Five, 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 five. That would be a Tuesday. So this is May 7th, May 4th, May 5th. So this is interesting. Usually it's a little bit more uh, spot on. So, yeah, so 39 and 27. So not really sure what's happening there. Let's try one more day. And so I'm going to go back here and go one day back. So here we've got the 4th. Yeah, so this is this is a little more accurate. Uh, the grid is saying that 50 kilowatt hours were received. Solar Edge is saying that 59 kilowatt hours were exported. The grid is saying that I took 37, and uh, Solar Edge is saying that imported 34. So so that's kind of neat, you know. Th those those numbers are pretty close. We get to we get to see that. Let's. Let's go back. Let's look at one more day. So, so this is kind of a neat way for us to really see if what we're seeing from the grid's perspective is what the grid is reporting. So uh, in this case, the grid has received 57 kilowatt hours. Solar Edge is saying only 50. Um, and then the import was 37. The grid is saying 47. So, you know, it's it's close. I, I, I guess it's, it's different hardware that... Uh, that, that, that detects these things. But anyway, uh, in a nutshell, we have the ability to monitor the same things from various platforms. And so uh, this is Solar Edge. This is FPL. We can see things from the perspective of the utility, from the perspective of the net meter. We can see things from perspective of the inverter, seeing what we've produced, what we've consumed long term, how much money we've saved. So definitely, uh, you know, super technical oriented. Um, and I think this is a good time to wrap it up. The moral of the story is definitely you want to make sure that you're getting the right equipment. So if you're getting an inverter, I recommend only Solar Edge. It is the best brand by far, most efficient, most reliable uh, panel level monitoring and optimization. This is uh, the newest tech and uh, really what, what we really love using and our customers are very happy with it. If you're going to be uh, looking at solar panels, my first criteria is it's got to be a 60 cell panel, not 72. You have to have a minimum 4,000 pascals. This is the uplift rating. I recommend uh, a power rating that's no less than 100. Ideally, you're getting like 340. That's what we would do if we were doing uh, Q cell panels. So, and you know, all black. It's a beautiful product. So, don't be scared to pull up a spec sheet. You just Google it. It's a bunch of numbers, but all the panel spec sheets are all pretty much standardized. So, you can compare apples to apples. Feel free to reach out to us anytime if you have any questions. Check out our social media. We're on. YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. So if uh, 
if if you want to reach out to us, give us a shout out. If you want a consultation, we will be happy to do that for free for you. If you want to talk to any of our happy customers, we'd be happy to get you in touch with them. Please uh, stop by, check us out. Next week, we're going to be doing another session. Should be a lot of fun. So uh, thanks so much for everybody that hung out with us today. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have fun.